Hi, welcome to Gun Games TV. My name is Arion, and today we're going to be talking about the Rare Breed Trigger. Before I get into anything, I do want to preface this entire video by stating that I am in no way, shape, and or form a legal expert. Everything mentioned in this video is 100% my subjective opinion, except for the part where I mentioned physics, because as we all know, trust the science, right? There is a ton of controversy in regards to this trigger. And before we really get into anything, we're gonna discuss how does it work? What are the issues? Some of the wrong information provided all over the interwebs, and what I did to make this bad boy much more reliable. So you're probably wondering, how does this bad boy work? Well, great question, Arion. I'm glad you asked. So this requires an M16 carrier. M16 carriers are about that long in the rear. Air 15 carriers are about that long. Now, if you're probably worried about whether you have an Air 15 carrier or an M16 carrier, AKA full auto carrier, you probably have an M16 because most M most rifles and pistols in the air platform are M16. There are obscure ones that are not, but most of them are. So you most likely will have compatibility, but don't take my word for it. With that said, the carrier, the reason why you need an M16 carrier is because it needs to interface with this at the end. And if you have one that's tiny and not long enough, it won't interface with this. The reason why it needs to interface is because when you try to pull, it will not go off. No matter how hard you pull, now there's no disconnector and this locking bar, safety latch, whatever you want to call it, we're not going to call it a sear because that refers to machine guns. I just don't want to go into that territory. But when you do try to pull, nothing will happen unless this is the carrier is in battery. So let's say the carrier is in battery, ready to shoot, pull, boom, goes the dynamite. Now the hammer hits the firing pin of the carrier and the carrier goes back normally. Now this is where the magic happens. The carrier comes back. There's a little nub right here, which is part of the trigger. Now your finger may still be pulled. And if it is not, it'll just reset like normally. But if it is the hammer, the rear of the hammer will hit the nub and that'll push the trigger forward. Cool, right? Now what's even cooler is that it goes back, the carrier goes back to the rear, comes back, boom, it is fireable again, right? So then, so on and so forth. That's easy. And you're probably wondering, is this compatible with my BRN-180? I'm sorry, but it is not. Is it compatible with my SIG Virtus, SIG Rattler, SIG Tac Ops? I'm glad you asked. It is, but that's for another video. Is it compatible with my CMMG drop-in 22 kit? Yes, that is also for another video. Uh, what about my Strebok? I have a, one of those cool Lingle Industries Scorpion lowers, takes air triggers, no because it doesn't have that rear. That's why the BRN-180 and some of the obscure type ARs may not be compatible. It's because it doesn't have the M16 cut to interface with the rear. So there are a few issues with this trigger and they're pretty small issues that are fixable and some of people don't have issues. But the first issue or quirk is that this thing only comes in safe and fire or semi, because it is still semi-auto, right? So there's no third mode to dictate if you want to, you know, do the forced reset mode and semi and safe. Uh, it's just safe and semi, essentially. So, or safe and forced tr reset trigger. The next issue that we're going to discuss today is the firing for single shots. So say you want to pull the trigger, get one shot off, and that's all you want to do. You know, times are hard, things are rough, 
everyone's got an OnlyFans. You want to pull once. You don't, you know, you don't want to, you know, have to sell pictures on the internet or anything. This, some people can do it really well, but let's be honest, most of us aren't Jerry Mitchell X and we can't do it. I can do it, but it did take me a while to, to figure it out. But you shoot and most of the time you either get two rounds off and that's only because the cycling is so quick. The next issue is, is kind of difficult. And I haven't found a fix yet and I've spent a lot of time modifying this and that issue is that in some setups, in some setups, the buffer needs to be lighter, even though what an H2, H3 is, is recommended by Rare Breed. And I haven't figured it out because you would think that a heavier buffer would make this work better because a heavier buffer makes a full auto AR work better. But for some reason, and this isn't just me, there's a lot of reports and I haven't figured it out. So that could be a con. I'm a lightweight guy, I like lightweight ARs but I haven't figured it out. And if anyone has figured it out, please comment and discuss it in the, in the comments below because I have not figured out why sometimes a lighter buffer, like a carbine buffer, three ounce, works just fine. One of the other issues with this is in the rear, let's talk about the rear for a second. You may be able to see it on mine, but in the rear, it eats up, the carrier, the M16 cuts in the carrier, eats up this trigger. Now, that doesn't really affect the trigger by any means, but it is cosmetically, I mean, you paid like, what, 400 bucks for this thing? It shouldn't be happening, but keep in mind, the dimensions for the carriers differ by just decimals to an inch, just tiny, tiny amounts. And that's what causes this. Not every carrier is made the same, just like not every AR, not all the dimensions and the specs are the same. Um, there's gonna be tiny, tiny, minute differences, which can cause that. I haven't found that it's really an issue though. Another issue is that if you're monkey gripping this trigger, your carrier may not even go back all the way, or if it tries to come back, it'll get stuck because you're holding so tight on the trigger. So it's recommended never to hold tight on the trigger. That I'm not gonna talk about in my fixes because that is just common sense for something like this. Don't hold tight, 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 because it will not function properly if you do and the carrier will not cycle properly. You will get the carrier to either get stuck as it's coming back or stuck as it's going back. So don't do it, just don't. Last but not least, saving this one for last, is the locking bar. This locking bar is flawed. And let me tell you why. Right here, you have a spring that's straight. And it sits in the frame of this, the, the enclosure of the trigger. It sits in a little pocket. And, the, and it sits in a pocket in the locking bar. Now this locking bar doesn't literally go back you know, like that. It doesn't, it, it pivots. As you can see, it pivots. You know, that's how science work, it arcs, kind of like in a diagonal type arc. It arcs like that, in like a quarter circle, right? Uh, that's how it, that's just its course of motion. Now, when it does that, the way it's designed is it actually kinks the spring. And it'll eventually kink the spring. That is the biggest issue and some people still have the kink, but it functions just fine. In my case, it stopped functioning with a regular, the buffer that I was using. And once I changed it and fixed it, it started working. But this leads me to the wrong information with the Rare Breed trigger. Now, Rare Breed says that if you push this more than 20% of its max distance, that it'll kink the spring and you'll ruin it. And, and that's why there's issues happening all over across everyone who's, well, I would say a good 50% of the people who purchased it. They're saying that it is because people are touching their finger. 
Now, let me tell you how insane that is, right? They're saying that my finger will do more damage to this right here than a bolt carrier. Have you ever stuck your finger in an ejection port? Have you ever seen those videos where, you know, those Russian guys are shooting their AKs and then their finger is right there where the handle that reciprocates is? You're telling me that my finger is gonna go do more damage to this than a carrier is gonna do to this? That's that's absolutely insane. This comes from Rarebeat among other, other YouTubers. So think about it. Newton's first law of physics, so, which is what stays in, what is in motion stays in motion. So when it hits the rear of this, it's not gonna be just stop. The carrier may bounce, right? But it's not just gonna stop. It's gonna go travel as far forward as it can, as much as it can, until the equal amount of force is applied back to it. Now, if you've had a chance to mess with one of these, you'll know that the spring is extremely weak. It's not a strong spring, and it will probably go as far forward as possible, um, maybe 80% of the distance, not 20% in any means, but it'll probably go a long way. And the heavier your springs are, the heavier your carrier is, uh, and your buffer, the more force is applied. Because think about it, my finger did not cause this. And if you're telling me, if you're telling me that my finger will do more damage to this thing right here, the, the carrier, the indentations or whatever you want to call that, that's insane. That's absolutely, absolutely insane. So think about a car, you hit on your brakes, you're driving real fast, you're going to skid, right? And eventually you'll stop. So why they're spreading this information is completely beyond me, but it's wrong. Now there is one other piece of, I wouldn't say it's wrong information, but misguided information about this trigger. And that's that you need to, if you have a longer carrier, you need to modify it. And while, yeah, that'll keep the indentations or prevent that from possibly occurring, that is not a requirement. And I haven't seen that these indentations that I mentioned earlier on the locking bar have inadvertently affect the function while firing. Now, the reason why I didn't put this portion in the issues is because I don't really find it an issue, but what you have to do is when you're putting the upper on the lower, the rear take rear takedown won't actually go into the the hole because the when the carrier tries to go down, it doesn't push this forward because it's too long, right? And this happens in one of my superlative arms builds, but it it, it just won't it won't sit. So I have to kind of pull the charging handle back just slightly, and then it'll allow me to put the rear takedown in. And then from there, no problems. But if you wanna go ahead and modify your carrier, by all means, go ahead and do it. I'm not gonna really go into deep detail about it, but it won't really affect the function of your trigger. Now we're at the good stuff. So I've modified two, two rare breed triggers. The first trigger I deem is the V1. Now. We're gonna get into it, but quickly, it has a bevel at the bottom of the locking bar to prevent kinking from the stock spring. So if you don't want to do crazy mods, you can just bevel the rear and I'll show you. And it has a either, you can use an extractor pin or a gas block roll pin as a guide rod and then a bolt catch spring with an O-ring at the end of the spring. And this does improve and prevent the kink. And then the V2. So the V2 is an idea I got from Armament USA. Armament USA is actually just a few miles down the road for me. Um, very local and I support local. I by any means am not sponsored by Armament USA, but if you go to armamentusa.com and look up the rare breed trigger modification, you send in your trigger and they'll modify it for you. And what he essentially did is he beveled out the locking bar like I did in the V1, but it's a little bit more beveled out. And then he added the bolt catch spring and a bolt catch detent. And then it looks like most likely 
it was drilled for the pocket in the rear for the spring for the bulkhead spring to sit against which i didn't do in my v1 so i got that from armament usa again it's 75 dollars you send your trigger in they will pay for the modification but in my hands i did my own version of it and i prefer it over i prefer it over the v1 and the reason being is because the v1 feels very spongy and it doesn't travel the locking bar doesn't travel as far but the v2 it travels further and it just it feels springier it doesn't not necessarily higher rated in spring tension but it travels further and it feels more springy and i would see less issues with the springier design than a spongier design the spongier design just feels rubbery to me versus springy you know springy to me so i prefer the v2 so one other thing that i want to talk about the, about this is the trigger return spring that spring sits right underneath the trigger and it helps reset and push the trigger forward to force reset it now i guess you could say it serves two purposes the first purpose that it serves is of course it pushes the trigger forward the second purpose it serves is that it helps if you increase the weight it'll help that single shot action so i improved the trigger pull weight from about 2.5 pounds to 3.75 pounds and now it's much easier to just boom tap one shot right uh, but also what i notice is that when the when the action cycles what it does is it the carrier will not need as much as much push on the hammer to reset the trigger which means you will have less malfunctions or issues especially if you're holding the trigger a little tighter so it just helps the all around the operation for me 3.75 was perfect for a lot of people you know they may need more but this trigger spring upgrade is awesome and i'll show you how to do that so now what you're going to see on this next portion is well how do i do this how do i do v1 or v2 stay tuned i'm going to go ahead and show you we're not going to focus too much on the trigger grip because you just drive this pin out and that's it all right so the v1 You're wondering well what is what is this well let me tell you this is a simple beveled cut simple beveled cut with a dremel so that if you wanted to use a stock spring when it rotated it doesn't cause the spring to kink as bad it will still happen but it won't now this is where the magic happens with this one. And again, this one is much spongier. It sits in, let me see if I can get a good focus here. It sits in like so. And there is a, in this one, there's a gas, gas block roll, roll pin in there. And that acts as a guide rod. But this goes back, it will not kink, no matter what. Will not kink. So you have a gas block roll pin. Easy. Self explanatory. This is all that's modified in this one. Now let's move on to the next one. So the next one, let's see if I can get a focus here. It has a deeper bevel and I use a, I believe it was a 3 16th drill or a drill bit to drill in the middle of this so that this is 532. The, the um, bolt catch detent pin is 532. But for it to travel further, I wanted to make sure I got it a little bit bigger of a size. So I drilled this part out 532 or uh, 3 16th rather. And the bevel is just like the other one, just it's a little bit lower. It's much lower, actually. It's about as low as you could go. So 
me see if you can see it better. But it is three, three sixteenths. And this fits better than a 530. You could do a 532, I did it originally and I didn't like it, so I increased it. Now, that is the V1s or V2 modification. And again, it's a bolt catch detent and a bolt catch spring. Now in the V2, I used a 532 drill bit to drill that hole that the normal V1 and your regular rear breeds ha uh, have so that the detent and the spring fit inside. So far to put, let me see if I can do it with one. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it so I can show you all. All right. It fits. Can't see it very well, but it fits. Right? So if you were to simply just push it down, it would go down, right? So I like the V2 better. And this one I like better. So again, I wanna give props to Armament USA. Now the last thing I wanna show you is a modification that I did here. This spring right here, I got from McMaster. I didn't have to modify it. And if you guys didn't know, the regular trigger pull on, it is cadmium plated, I believe. So it's kind of toxic, but I mean, it's only if you really inhale the fumes. But this spring right here is a little bit thinner when it sits in the hole than your normal spring, but it's stronger. So your normal pull weight for your trigger is gonna be about 2.5 pounds. With this, it yields a 3.75 pound trigger pull. So about 1.25 pounds more than your normal trigger pull. What that means for you, and I have this in both of my triggers, is that it'll be easier to do a single shot. I personally do not like high heavy weight triggers. Um, however, you can get a stronger rated one, but this is the one I preferred if you guys want to know what the product information is, I can put it down in the links below. However, this is some of the modifications that you can do. Um, not very high level. I mean, it's super simple. It takes maybe an hour for someone that's not very skilled and 30 minutes, 15 minutes for someone who is. So very simple, very easy. There is one more thing I do want to talk about. And that is this spring. Well, the spring, it's not very heavy at all. There is one spring that you can replace this with, and I haven't really had much time to talk about it, but there is one more spring, and that is the POF Rebel spring on the POF website. It has to have one of these, right? And the POF Rebel spring kind of does, and it is heavier, which that what that means is that it'll be harder for the carrier to go into or go reciprocate. It'll also cause harder primer strikes. I haven't really messed around with it too much. I did it on my Sig, Rat uh, Sig Rattler with this trigger and was having issues. But I mean, that's a very obscure type air style pistol. Now, I just want to let you guys know, so you guys know that there's other options available, but I wouldn't recommend using anything other than this or the POF Rebel if you try it, but um, keep in mind, you can't use a different trigger spring unless it has this little difference here, which the POF Rebel one does. So if you like what you saw today, I would just please ask you to like, share, subscribe, because without your support, I cannot make videos like this. I will continue to do these type of videos and maybe some other stuff uh, if you guys like it. Now, it will include some obscure stuff like this, some modifications to like piston rods or piston systems. I will be doing a, for, at least for this, I will continue to do some, some, some segments specifically in regards to the SIG 
Virtus line and CMMG22 drop-in kits, which we can make this work. There is some stuff you need to do though. In addition, I will be dropping a Evolution Weapon Systems video showcasing that product. I have three, three of them. I have two older ones and one newer one, and they are all very different from one another because of some of the modifications that I did, but there is no videos on the internet about this. So if you like it and if you wanna see it, please let me know. And please let me know some of the other things that you might wanna see. Again, my name is Arion with Gun Games TV. Thanks for watching.